soldiers, airmen, family and friends of the Washington National Guard, welcome and thank you for your attendance today. The presence of the 133rd Army Band at today's ceremony represents the significant role that the fife, drum, and other musical instruments have played throughout military history, both for signaling in camp and on the battlefield. The 133rd Band is commanded by Warrant Officer 1 Matthew Wenman and First Sergeant Gabriel Burbano. Present on the field today are representatives of each major subordinate command within the Washington National Guard. The Army National Guard is commanded by Brigadier General Paul Sellers and Command Sergeant Major Com Carter Richardson. Representing the Washington Army National Guard on the field today are 81st Striker Brigade Combat Team, commanded by Colonel Craig Broyles and Command Sergeant Major Brant Gibbons. 56th Information Operations Group, commanded by Colonel Nicholas Parker and Command Sergeant Major Amy Patterson. 96th Troop Command, commanded by Colonel Kristen Durda and Command Sergeant Major Eric Sandland. 96th Aviation Troop Command, commanded by Colonel Mitch Sieglock and Command Sergeant Major Troy Martin. 205th Regional Training Institute, commanded by Colonel Tim Osmer and Command Sergeant Major Alton Huckabee. The Air National Guard is commanded by Brigadier General Kenneth Borchers and Chief Master Sergeant Alan Lawson. Representing the Air National Guard on the field today are 141st Air Refueling Wing, commanded by Colonel Jim McGovern and Chief Master Sergeant Steve Webster. 194th Wing, commanded by Colonel Brian Berggren and Chief Master Sergeant Stephen Nolan. The Western Air Defense Sector, commanded by Colonel David Boyd and Chief Master Sergeant Anthony Brown. At the center of the formation is a joint color guard comprised of members from both the Washington Army and Air National Guard. The presence of the colors at the center of the formation represents their position at the forefront of the unit during the heat of the battle. The commander of troops for today's ceremony is the Washington Army National Guard Chief of Staff, Colonel Jack Mashallo. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party. Today's official party is Governor Inslee, Major General Dougherty, and Brigadier General Welsh. Governor Inslee defers honors to Major General Dougherty on the occasion of his retirement. Ladies and gentlemen, today's invocation is provided by Chaplain Brewer. It's a beautiful morning to ask God for a blessing. Please join me as I pray. Dear Lord God, I thank you for another opportunity to experience your grace and mercy today. God, I thank you that we are able to gather here to celebrate the fact that you still give blessings through human leaders. God, I ask as Major General Dougherty passes the guide on to Brigadier General Welsh, we thank you for the wisdom, strength, and courage that you have given Brett as he has led us through emergencies, disasters, and situations that none of us could have anticipated early in our careers. I thank you for giving Brett and Dolores the passion and patience to serve soldiers, airmen, and their families. And God, I ask that you give Brigadier General Welsh the ability to continue building on the legacy that Major General Dougherty is leaving. Give Gent and his family the courage and strength necessary to be the leader that the Washington National Guard needs right now. God, as we celebrate Major General Dougherty's retirement, let today be a reminder that the experience of the Army in the past provides a launching point for the future. 
provide comfort, peace, and joy as the Doherty family begins a new chapter. Provide for Brett and Dolores a profound sense of accomplishment and satisfaction as a result of what you have done through them over the last 40 years in their service to this state and nation. Let the friendships and memories gained through their time in the Army serve as an anchor of strength and resiliency in their next chapter in life. And let the words of Scripture ring true. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And now your blessing for the Doherty family and for everyone gathered here today. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. And may the Lord be gracious to you and give you peace. In your holy name I pray, amen. Please be seated. At this time, a bouquet of red roses is presented to Dolores Dougherty. Red roses represent the color of the heart, which is appropriate considering the loving concern that Dolores has shown for our servicemen and women and their families. Dolores will always have a special place in our hearts. Her roses are in full bloom, symbolizing the beauty and fulfillment of her time with the Washington National Guard. <clears throat> Yellow roses are being presented to Brigadier General Welsh's spouse, Jill. Yellow is the color of joy and friendship and symbolizes the relationship between the families and the service members. Sir, the colors are present. Present the command. Present arms. Present arms. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of our national anthem by the 133rd Army Band. Please be seated. The changing of command is a time-honored custom dating back to the Roman Empire. The United States Army adopted the custom of passing the colors when General George Washington assumed command of the Continental Army at Boston on July 3rd, 1775. The colors represent not only the heritage and history of the unit, but also the unity and loyalty of its service members. The colors are the commander's symbol of authority, representing his responsibilities to the organization. 
Wherever the commander is, there also are the colors. The passing of the unit colors represents the transfer of authority and responsibility for the unit from one commander to another. The senior enlisted leader is the keeper of the colors. As the senior enlisted service member in the command, he is the spokesman for both the loyalty and concerns of the service members and the principal advisor to the commander. As a warning to the audience, as the colors are passed, cannon blasts will fire. The passing of the colors from Command Sergeant Major Ecclestone. <clears throat> The passing of the colors from Command Sergeant Major Ecclestone to Major General Dougherty signifies his last act of allegiance to that commander. The passing of the colors from Major General Dougherty to Governor Inslee signifies that the organization is never without leadership. The passing of the colors from Governor Inslee to the incoming commander, Brigadier General Welsh, signifies the passing of his trust and the responsibility for the organization and its service members. The passing of the colors from Brigadier General Welsh to Command Sergeant Major Ecclestone signifies the confidence that the commander places in the non-commissioned officer corps and is the senior enlisted leader's first act of allegiance to his new commander. Ladies and gentlemen, the governor of the great state of Washington, Governor Inslee. Uh, good morning, what a beautiful day in the most beautiful state, the nation, and the most beautiful country on the planet. Thanks uh, to Washington State National Guard. And it is a real honor to join you in this uh, transition. Uh, when I have seen the National Guard in action, I wish there were eight million people who are the citizens of the state who have seen the incredible competence, professionalism, and courage and dedication of the Guard in the last 12 years. You've done so much for so many with limited resources at times. You've deployed 2,000 troops across the world in the defense of democracy, in Ukraine, in Poland, in Syria. General Daugherty and all of you, you face some of the most unique challenges the state of Washington has ever faced during its history. Under General Daugherty's leadership, the, the Guard has been transformed from a mechanized brigade to a striker brigade. You were able to modernize our helicopter fleet to increase our support for overseas missions and our important firefighting responses right here at home. You've expanded our cybersecurity capability, protecting our elections process and our critical public infrastructure. And I'm proud that when the nation looks for defense against cybersecurity threats, it looks first to the Washington State National Guard. Now, we know a leader sets a tone for an organization, and the general's dedication to his units has been spectacular. Under his leadership, the state has provided our forces more funding for more training in wildland, wildland firefighting, more education grants for our personal development, more early enrollment opportunities, paid family leave for spouses who were employed by the state, and ongoing improvements to health care and child care supports. And I have to tell you, if I can make a personal note, as governor, when I came into this position, I didn't know we were going to have bridges falling and mudslides and fires to the extent or attacks on our nation, our state's capital. Uh, I didn't know those things were going to happen. And I didn't know I would have somebody leading the National Guard to give me personal assurance 
that we would have a leader who would always be there. And General Dougherty, what you've done for me personally, I want to extend my appreciation to you. You've allowed me to sleep at night. Okay. Thank you very much in, in so many occasions for what you've done. And I want to make a note about the Guard's performance and duties at well, as well. You know, we know the Guard in fighting fires. We know the Guard in their spectacular performance of duties during COVID when I saw them working at food banks day and night and bringing your logistical talents to make food banks work more effectively. The food banks have improved because of the Guard's leadership in service overseas in actual combat. We know these things, but I want to comment what the Guard does that I think over time is the most important thing. The Guards are protecting democracy itself in so many respects. And the Guard is pivotal to the functioning of democracy in our state, in our nation. I saw that firsthand when people wanted to disrespect democracy, when there were uh, essentially violence at our state's capital. And when I saw the Guard standing there overnight, and it was kind of cold at that time, I knew democracy itself was being protected by the Washington State National Guard. And of all the blessings we've been given in this fair land, that has to be first amongst it. And I want to thank the Guard for standing watch uh, at, uh, in those troubled times. Now, I tried to do my part. I, I lent one pair of my gloves to a guardsman that didn't have them one night. So we're doing our part to help as well. Now, on a somber note, we have 27 names on the Washington Military Department website that account for those lost in combat operations. And we know the cost has been higher due to injury, illness, and unfortunately, suicide. And we know that we will not forget those ultimate sacrifices in combat as well and getting ready for combat. This profound commitment deserves our deepest respect. And every single person who puts on the uniform knows that at some time they could be at risk. So now is a time of transition. Next year, we're going to have a new governor. I thought there'd be applause for that, actually. <laughs> Today, you're getting a new adjutant general. After 44 years of service and 12 years as, admiral, uh, uh, as adjutant general, I think Brett deserves a rest and more so Dolores. So we're really happy about that opportunity. And we want to welcome uh, Brigadier General Welsh. Uh, I am so pleased that we have somebody with, who is so capable of immediately taking a hands-on position with the Guard who has been so successful in the organizational pursuits, we could not more pleased to have somebody to give the next, general, the next governor confidence. And whoever that is, I can tell them their first call should be to General uh, Welsh. General Welsh, good luck. We're very confident in your leadership. So we know that the Guard is going to continue its incredible uh, pursuit of democracy and safety. I want to thank everybody involved, in particular General Dougherty, be well, and uh, we know our state is going to continue on its glorious tradition of protecting democracy as well. Good luck to us all. Ladies and gentlemen, the outgoing Adjutant General, Major General Dougherty. Well, thank you. Governor Inslee, General Brunson, friends, family, soldiers and airmen, thank you for being here with us today to share this very important change of command ceremony. Soldiers and airmen of the Washington National Guard, you look great, and I truly appreciate the hard work that you have put into this uh, ceremony today. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I told you yesterday I think I've done about a million of these things, and uh, I know how much work it takes, so thank you. General Welsh, congratulations on becoming the 37th Adjutant General of Washington. I am so happy to be turning over command to you. Yeah, in, a, in, a, in a several ways. And I'm looking forward to watching you take the team to the next level in so many areas. You're going to have a blast. It has been said that challenges make life interesting and that challenges overcome make life fulfilling. I believe that to be true, 
And I also believe that you will be just as fulfilled as I now find myself to be, because this job comes with plenty of amazing challenges that you don't anticipate. I absolutely know that you are ready. I'm going to keep my comments short for now because we have a retirement ceremony coming. I want to thank Governor Gregoire, first of all, for appointing me as the 36th Adjutant General of Washington. And I want to thank Governor Inslee for reappointing me to that role. But more important than that, Governor, thank you for being such a great example of compassionate servant leadership for our state over the past 12 years that you've been our governor. That's a long run. It has been such a pleasure serving on your executive cabinet and working with you as we navigated many of those challenging situations. I'll always remember the terrible tragedy of the landslide at Oso, which physically and emotionally exhausted us. And that was immediately followed by the worst fire season in our state's history. And as I was up there at the fires, I was flying through smoke in one of our Blackhawks. My phone started buzzing and vibrating wildly in my pocket. And I looked at the message that was flashing across the screen. And I kid you not, it said, warning, warning, asteroid detected and is expected to impact Earth in Washington or Oregon. And I had to send the governor a text message. And uh, it said, well, governor, the bad news is that we may have an asteroid hit our state. But the good news is that nobody has seen the locust yet. <laughs> now, fortunately for all of us, the asteroid broke up into little pieces and landed out in the ocean somewhere. We didn't know it at the time, but 2014 and 2015 prepared us for the truly major disasters of the pandemic and large-scale civil unrest. Governor, your leadership during those years was absolutely inspirational. While our nation lost over one million people killed by COVID, under your leadership, Washington kept our death rate well below the national average. Thank you for placing the lives of Washingtonians above all else as we responded to that emergency. And thank you for being such a great commander in chief of our National Guard during those very difficult and challenging times. General Brunson here with us today, I, I wanna thank you uh, for being such a great partner and leader in the Pacific. Our neighbor across the street at First Corps and U.S. Army Pacific are truly on point for our nation in the vast expanse of the Pacific as China attempts to dominate that space. The Washington National Guard has been very fortunate to have you at the helm of First Corps as we have worked to deepen our partnerships with both Thailand and Malaysia. It has been an honor to serve with you, General Brunson, and thanks so much for being here. It means a lot to me and a lot to the entire team here. Members of the Washington National Guard and Washington Military Department, thank you for the last 12 years. Serving as your Adjutant General has been the greatest honor of my life. I'm constantly amazed at your ability to selflessly execute every mission that comes to us in a flawless manner. Most of the public doesn't know how much work it takes to mobilize units, deploy them across the globe or the state, and have them accomplish missions that range from full-on combat to running a food bank, or being evacuated from the state EOC due to a COVID outbreak there, but simultaneously responding to that same pandemic, civil unrest, and a forest fire that threatens to destroy our towns simultaneously. And while all of that is going on, our Washington Youth Challenge Academy continues to educate teens who have failed high school and instill new values that will place them on the right course for a successful life, pandemic or not. We know how much work all of that takes. We know the sacrifices that must be made to execute successfully. I am so very, very proud of this team and every single member of it both military and civilian. Thank you for what you do and thank you for who you are. I look forward to watching you continue to serve the people of Washington and our nation under the leadership of General Welsh. And I am supremely confident that you will continue to amaze us all. Stay strong and stay committed. Tag 36 is done. Long live Tag 37. <laughs> Yeah.
Ladies and gentlemen, the Adjutant General of the Washington National Guard, Brigadier General Welsh. Governor Inslee, First Lady Trudy Inslee, Lieutenant General Brunson, federal, state, and local officials, fellow general and flag officers, dignitaries from Ukraine, the Kingdom of Thailand, and Canada, members of the Washington Military Department, distinguished guests, family, and friends. It is with great humility and dedication to service that I accept this position as the 37th Adjutant General of the State of Washington. For the past 12 years, we've all had the honor and privilege of serving side by side with one of the finest officers produced by the Washington National Guard in Major General Dougherty. In General Dougherty's incoming speech as TAG back in 2012, he referred to his predecessor, then Major General Tim Lowenberg, as the best adjutant general in the nation and a true national treasure. Judging from the comments I've heard from your peers, sir, and from how blessed we were under your leadership for the past 12 years, you are arguably the best adjutant general in the nation and the true national treasure now. This state and nation owe you, Dolores, and the entire Doherty family a tremendous debt of gratitude for the past five decades of your service and sacrifice. When Major General Doherty took over as TAG in 2012, he pledged to tear down the silos of excellence within our organization and create a true joint team focused on efficiency and preparedness across both our federal and domestic missions. The investments he made in forging this team early on in his tenure paid tremendous dividends, thankfully not for the Cascadia earthquake that was originally in his crosshairs, but during the COVID-19 pandemic and civil unrest that rocked the state and nation from 2020 to 2022. His efforts ensured this agency stepped up to the plate, literally, and delivered the compassionate service and response necessary at the time of Washington's greatest need in nearly 100 years. When the state and communities were shutting down, we were standing up to provide much needed help across the state, crushing every mission area we were assigned. The threats over the past 12 years have changed quite a bit, and we are now living through some of the most dangerous times I've experienced in my 36 years of military service. Threats abroad from the People's Republic of China, Russia, Iran, and North Korea have, potentially, have the potential to alter dramatically alter the international system and trajectory of the democratic world. Threats at home from political extremism, a likely contentious election season to come, and a polarized society are at levels never seen since the 1960s. Additionally, climate-driven disasters are becoming far more common, growing both in intensity and cost, and demand even more enhanced preparedness. While some of these threats may seem far away, they manifest themselves in Washington state through disinformation campaigns that undermine our value systems, a fentanyl emergency driving a homelessness crisis, destroying lives, families, and communities, and cyber attacks on critical infrastructure and election systems that have the potential to disrupt our way of life. Governor, your Washington National Guard and Washington Military Department is absolutely operating at the top of its game right now and ready for these and the next challenges, be they at home or across the globe. We have the most diverse and most capable force we have ever had. With Brigadier General Paul Sellers, Assistant Adjutant General Army, Brigadier General Ken Borchers, Assistant Adjutant General Air, Brigadier General Mike Akey, Director of our Joint Staff, Command Sergeant Major Bruce Ecclestone, Command Senior Enlisted Leader, Colonel Joe Mawson, Commander of the Washington State Guard, Mr. Robert Azell, Director of the Emergency Management Division, Ms. Amy Steinhilber, Director of the Washington Youth Challenge Academy, and Colonel Kristen Durda, Military Department Chief of Staff, you are truly blessed with a world-class team, vastly more prepared today than we were 12 years ago when General Doherty last touched that flag. Governor Inslee, thank you for the trust and confidence in me to lead this team through these challenges now and into the future. My very best wishes to you. We'll stop here. Now, just for the Air Force folks, if that was a fighter, it would have been on time, but it's a tanker, so J-Mac, we have some work to do. <laughs> That's okay. You know where to start. But uh, awesome points for effort. Um, as I was saying, Governor, my very best wishes to you and the First Lady as you step back from public life and return to being full-time grandparents, and certainly great to meet your grandson Brody again today. 
I pledge that my best efforts uh, will be to ensure the next seven months are as drama-free as they can be. And as we briefly discussed during that final interview in your uh, great mansion a few weeks back, thank you for the generous offer to return to your roots as a bulldozer driver, should we need you at the next fire, uh, if we ever get down that far on the resource list. <laughs> in closing, there's a famous scene at the end of the movie Saving Private Ryan, where a dying Tom Hanks tells Matt Damon, after an epic battle fighting outnumbered and outgunned in Normandy, France, to earn this, earn this. To the men and women of the Washington Military Department and Washington National Guard, I solemnly pledge to give you my best efforts each and every day to earn this, to earn this honor and privilege of leading this great organization as we continue to step up and confront challenges, foreign and domestic. This country and our state needs us laser focused now more than ever. Thank you. This concludes the change of command ceremony. We will now transition to Major General Dougherty's retirement ceremony after a quick reset of the field. We ask that the audience remain in place during this transition. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the retirement ceremony for Major General Dougherty. We would like to extend a special thanks and welcome to Major General Dougherty's family and friends for being here today. The soldier we honor today has dedicated his life and service to our state and nation. He and his family have made many sacrifices on the road to retirement. Sacrifices in the name of duty, honor, country, and freedom for others. He has been an integral part of the Washington National Guard, and as he closes the final chapter on his 44-year Army career, he leaves our organization a richer and better place. You can find Major General Dougherty's complete bio in the program. Ladies and gentlemen, our presiding official, the First Corps Commander, Lieutenant General Brunson. I've already begun to win because I was able to make it up the stairs without falling today. <laughs> and at 57, you start to wonder if you're going to be able to make those walks. There's a strange substance that's rolling down the side of my face right now that I haven't felt here in the five summers I've spent in this beautiful, beautiful state. And while my wife wants us to go back to North Carolina eventually, after hearing that sergeant sing that uh, Washingtonian hymn, if you will, I might be changing my mind, Governor, in uh, trying to stay in the great state of Washington. I could drive bulldozers with you, maybe. <laughs> Good morning, and thank you all for being here today. All our distinguished guests, General and Mrs. Inslee, you're the Commander-in-Chief, so I'm going to make you a General today, sir. <laughs> thank you all for being here to celebrate the Dougherty family along with us. Today's a milestone for the Washington National Guard, and I'm honored to help celebrate and acknowledge Major General Dougherty's incredible and distinguished service, much of which you've already heard about. His service not only to our nation, but to the great state of Washington. Major General Dougherty's career has been nothing short of extraordinary over the past 44 years wearing the cloth of the nation. He's exemplified the highest standards of leadership, integrity, and commitment to the defense of our nation and to the state of Washington. From his early days as a young lieutenant to his role as a general officer and senior leader, Brett has consistently demonstrated exceptional dedication to the mission and to the service members under his command. Throughout his career, Major General Dougherty faced countless challenges, but always rose to meet them with courage and resilience. He is a guiding force through times of peace and conflict providing steadfast leadership and unwavering support to service members and their families. 
Now, I could stand here most of the day highlighting Brett's many, many accomplishments over his time in service. But again, there's a strange substance that's running down the side of my face under this hot leather hat. And I know you all are ready to celebrate, so I'll hit just a few highlights. The Washington National Guard is a critical partner to First Corps and our mission in the Indo-Pacific. Brett's leadership has been decisive in maturing this relationship into what it is today and into what it will become. Most notably was the establishment of a second partnership with Malaysia in 2017, while also growing a significant partnership with one of our strategic partners in the region, Thailand. Over the past three years, the Washington National Guard has provided more than 2,000 soldiers and airmen in support of Operation Pathways, to include Cobra Gold and Hanuman Guardian, with plans, again, to expand in the coming years. Through Brett's, Brett's insistence, he convinced the Army to convert the 81st Armored Brigade Combat Team to the 81st Striker Brigade Combat Team, providing more modern and mobile vehicles for both federal and state response missions. Because of this modernization to strikers, we, the Corps and the Guard, were able to conduct five striker leaders courses over the last two years. He also led the effort in the modernization of the UH-60 and CH-47 helicopters, which were the oldest in the Army, and oversaw the reorganization of the Washington Army National Guard, which allowed them to excel in domestic operations. Whether leading from abroad or in our own backyard, he has always prioritized the welfare of his soldiers and the security of the state and our nation. He's deployed more than 3,000 soldiers and airmen to dozens of locations in support of the United States Army and United States Air Force. During some of the state's most challenging domestic disasters, he served as a key advisor to Washington's governor to include the nation's largest and deadliest mudslide, landslide, multiple record-breaking wildfire seasons, the COVID-19 pandemic, and several periods of civil unrest. Finally, Major General Daugherty led a decades-long fight to get defensive cyber capability in the National Guard of every state and territory, truly increasing the security of our nation. And though I said finally, there's more. As a young general, fresh to Washington State, quite unsure how things, the bottom as my wife calls it, could fall out in October after having a beautiful June and July coming from North Carolina. When the bottom fell out, Brett was there, and Brett caught me. Brett showed me the ropes, showed me what it meant to soldier in this great state. We built a partnership, the likes of which has not been seen as Brett had the 81st commander at the time bring his colors to my headquarters, that they might be members of my command. It's a rare thing for a leader to say it's more important for my people to be where they need to be, as opposed to maybe where Brett's boss and my boss told us to be. But we forged this relationship that led to better training for our soldiers, better opportunities for all involved, and it gave me a friend. Brett's impact extends beyond the defense of the nation. He's been a mentor and a role model to countless service members, to DOD civilians, to state employees, inspiring them all to strive for excellence. His leadership has fostered a culture of professionalism and camaraderie within the Guard and within my Corps that will leave a lasting legacy that will be felt for generations to come. As we honor General Dougherty today, we also recognize the sacrifices made by his family. Military service is a shared commitment, and the support of loved ones is essential to the success of any service member. Our 38th Chief of Staff of the Army, Raymond T. Ordierno, was fond of saying that soldiers are the strength of our nation, and the family is the strength of the soldier. To Dolores, Heather, and Peter, thank you for sharing your husband and your father for so many years. We extend our deepest gratitude for your support to him. Your sacrifices enabled him. Your sacrifices enabled our nation. Your sacrifices enabled this state. My hope for you, Dolores, is that you can enjoy your cabin by the lake and that Brett finishes all those construction projects you've been saving for. And Brett, my friend, as you embark on this new chapter of your life, I thank you for this great opportunity today. And I hope you look back with pride on the legacy that you leave behind. We're wishing you all the best in your retirement 
And though you are stepping away from uniform service, I know you will continue to serve this state and serve the state well. Thank you for your service, your leadership, your unwavering commitment to our nation. And Dolores, who knew, who knew what began on a short hike around Mount Rainier would lead to all that you see before you and around you today. Ladies and gentlemen, as able, I would ask that you would please rise and join me in a round of applause for Major General Retired Brett Doherty. God bless America. God bless the great state of Washington. God bless her guardians. Courage. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the presentation of awards. We will start by presenting Major General Dougherty with the Distinguished Service Medal. Attention to orders. Permanent Order 095-0016, dated the fourth day of April, 2024. The United States of America awarded the Distinguished Service Medal to Major General Brett D. Dougherty for exceptional service to the government in duties of great responsibility over his 40-year career, culminating as the Adjutant General of Washington State and Commanding General of the Washington National Guard. Major General Dougherty's command responsibility at the highest level provided leadership, strategic advisory guidance, and synergy for the Washington National Guard and nation. He spent a lifetime devoted to creating a safer, more secure nation. His leadership will have long-lasting and positive impact on the Washington National Guard. Major General Dougherty's impeccable service and unwavering dedication reflect great credit upon him, the Washington Army National Guard, and the United States Army. Signed, Christine E. Warmoth, Secretary of the Army. We will now present Major General Dougherty with the Washington State Distinguished Service Medal. Attention to orders. Permanent Order 128-021, dated the 7th day of May, 2024. The State of Washington awarded the Distinguished Service Medal to Major General Brett D. Dougherty for exceptional meritorious service while serving in positions of increasing responsibility, culminating as the Adjutant General of Washington State and the Commanding General of the Washington National Guard from 28 July, 2012 to 30 June, 2024. Major General Brett Dougherty's command responsibility at the highest level provided leadership, strategic advisory guidance, and synergy for the Washington National Guard and nation. His leadership will have long-lasting and positive impact on the Washington National Guard. Major General Dougherty's impeccable service and unwavering dedication reflects great credit upon himself, the Washington National Guard, and the Army National Guard. Signed, Paul T. Sellers, Brigadier General, Washington Army National Guard Commanding. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. The Order of St. Michael recognizes individuals who have contributed significantly to the promotion of Army aviation in ways that stand out in the eyes of the recipient's seniors, subordinates, and peers. These individuals demonstrate the highest standards of integrity and moral character, display an outstanding degree of professional competence, and serve the United States Army aviation community with distinction. Appearing before a most arduous and discriminatory committee of tried and proven Army aviators and aviation patriots, be it known that Major General Dougherty was tested and found worthy of special recognition for outstanding contributions to the community of Army aviation and is hereby inducted into the Honorable Order of St. Michael. The Archangel St. Michael is the embodiment of courage, justice, and gallantry. So too, the aforementioned individual embodies these qualities and represents excellence in aviation. Therefore, the President of the Army Aviation Association of America acknowledges that this patriot is due special honor and respect for now and posterity.
At this time, we will present Major General Dougherty's wife, Dolores, son, Peter, and his wife, Christine, with their children, Leanna and Luke, and General Dougherty's daughter, Heather, and partner, Charles, with the Washington State Commander's Award for Guardsman Support. I would like to invite all to come forward for this presentation. Almost like grief. That's right. <laughs> In sincere and grateful appreciation of your enduring and loyalty and faithfulness as your husband, father, and grandfather served the state and nation. Major General Dougherty's service was instrumental in ensuring you and your family inherited a stronger nation and a safer world. During these years, you provided unwavering and unconditional support. Your selfless dedication and your sacrifices reflect great credit upon you, your family, and the Washington National Guard. Signed, Paul T. Sellers, Brigadier General, Washington Army National Guard Commanding. We will now present a certificate of appreciation to Dolores. To all who shall see these presents greeting, this is to certify that Dolores Dougherty, on the occasion of the retirement of her husband from the United States Army, has earned grateful appreciation for her own unselfish, faithful, and devoted service. Her unfailing support and understanding helped to make possible her husband's lasting contribution to the nation. Signed, General Randy A. George, United States Army Chief of Staff. We will now present a Presidential Certificate of Appreciation for service in the Armed Forces of the United States. I extend to you my personal thanks and sincere appreciation of our nation for your honorable service. You helped to maintain the security of the United States of America with a devotion to duty that is in keeping with the proud tradition of our armed forces. I honor your service and respect the commitment and loyalty you displayed over the years. My best wishes to you for happiness and success in the future. Signed, President Joseph R. Biden, Commander-in-Chief. We now invite Governor Inslee to come forward to present Major General Dougherty with a framed memento recognizing his many years of service to the state of Washington. We now invite Major General Retired Reese, former Adjutant General of Oregon State and currently serving as Senior Advisor to the Chief of the National Guard Bureau to come forward and read a letter on behalf of General Hokanson. Governor Inslee, General Brunson, General Dougherty, General Welsh, ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to deliver a personal letter from General Hokanson to General Dougherty. Dear Brett, congratulations on your retirement. Kelly and I are very sorry we can't attend your ceremony in person, but your inspiring service, trusted counsel, and valued friendship compelled me to write this letter. We met as West Coast tags, and I was glad to have a fellow Army aviator as a mentor and neighbor. We faced similar challenges and shared similar perspectives, and I couldn't have asked for a better colleague. Even if the hunting and fishing pictures you shared while I was stuck in DC always made me a bit jealous. Your 12-year leadership of the Washington National Guard is a tribute to your expertise and stellar reputation. Our nation is better for your service. I have long admired your tenacity, 
and drive to make our organization a better place for soldiers, airmen, and National Guard families. Your persistent efforts persuaded the Chief of Staff of the Army and the Secretary to convert the 81st to a striker brigade combat team. You also successfully convinced the Army to modernize our oldest CH-47s and UH-60s. Similarly, your collaboration with the U.S. Forest Service and Washington's Department of Natural Resources to develop training and certification for National Guard wildfire fighting crews has set a model and a standard for other states to follow. Your dedication to readiness has been evident throughout your career. You commanded the first National Guard unit mobilized to Title 10 after 911 supporting law enforcement agencies on their northern border. You also commanded the rear detachment for the 81st Combat uh, Armored Brigade Combat Team, running a medical holding company uh, for 600 wounded and injured soldiers and training, validating, and shipping 600 replacement soldiers, keeping the 81st at 100% combat strength in Operation Iraqi Freedom. Whether it was fighting America's wars, responding to the deadly Oso landslide, providing troops in the face of civil unrest, fighting for cyber force structure, navigating the COVID pandemic, or developing earthquake plans and exercises, you helped the National Guard keep our promise to America, a promise to be always ready, always there. In remembering and honoring your accomplishments, I must also take a moment to thank Dolores and your family for their tremendous support over the course of your career. None of us who wear the cloth of our nation serve alone. Our families both share our sacrifices and make sacrifices of their own. From your father, Carl, and your uncles who served in Korea and World War II, to your children, Heather and Peter, who have followed your footsteps in serving our nation, the doctor, Dougherty family's legacy of service reflects the highest ideals of our nation. I hope your retirement is full of more hunting and fishing adventures, making memories with your grandchildren at the cabin, and your continued selfless service through the Serve Washington Commission. Congratulations on an exemplary career and a well-deserved retirement. Well done, my friend. Well done. Sincerely, Daniel R. Hokinson, General U.S. Army, Chief of the National Guard Bureau. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please stand as Lieutenant General Brunson will now retire Major General Dougherty. Attention to orders. The Department of the Army, by order of the Secretary of the Army, Major General Brett D. Dougherty, is relieved from his active duty responsibilities, effective 30 June 2025. Signed, Randy A. George, General, Chief of the Staff of the Army. Certificate of Retirement from the Armed Forces of the United States of America. To all who shall see these presents, greeting. This is to certify that Major General Brett D. Dougherty, having served faithfully and honorably, was retired from the United States Army. Signed, Randy A. George, General, Chief of Staff of the Army. Please be seated. Every retiree receives a special retirement pin as a memento of their active duty service. At this time, we would like to ask Dolores to place this pin on her husband's lapel to symbolize transition from active duty to retired status. We will now present Major General Dougherty with a commemorative flag. Dear Major General Dougherty, this commemorative flag is presented to you in recognition of your honorable and faithful service to our state and nation as a member of the Washington National Guard. The dedication, loyalty, and selfless service you rendered as a guardsman to protect the lives and property of our fellow citizens of the state of Washington and as a soldier and guardian to protect our freedom and way of life did not go unnoticed or unappreciated. May the flag that is being presented to you always be displayed proudly as it is the symbol of every high ideal in the American way of life. 
The sacrifices you and your family made during your military service are embodied in the very fabric of the American flag that we embrace and guard with our lives. The red in our flag is made more brilliant by the heroism and sacrifices of our nation's defenders. The white more stainless and pure by the actions of all Americans to provide freedom and equality. And the blue in the starry field is made more beautiful by the loyalty and unit of our, unity of our people to pursue the principles of liberty and justice for all. Thank you for your service. We wish you well in your future endeavors. Sincerely, Brigadier General Sellers, Commanding General, Washington Army National Guard. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Major General Retired Dougherty will now give his remarks. Thank you for that warm welcome to the podium. I, I know it's getting warm and uh, you know at my farewell dinner I promised everyone that today's speech will be short because I gave the longer speech that night when everyone had a soft seat and a cold drink. I'll do my best to bring this to a conclusion today in a timely manner. As everyone knows I must retire today because I have just simply grown too darn old to continue to serve as a soldier. Now, now, I know you're all thinking, no way, he is not that old, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, right, yeah, you guys aren't buying that. Maybe not. You know, I've been kind of reflecting on how much time has passed during my career and during my life, and I've discovered some pretty interesting facts that I'll share with you. For instance, when I was born, our flag only had 48 stars on it. That's the same flag that flew during World War I. The veterans who served during the Korean War were in their 20s. The World War II veterans were in their 30s. The World War I veterans were only in their late 50s. And wait for it, yep, the last living veteran of the Civil War was still alive. So yes, that makes me your personal connection to the Civil War. <laughs> now, as if that wasn't evidence enough that it's time for me to go, consider this. The amazing 65-year-old KC-135 that just flew over our field here, well, that plane was just rolling off the assembly line at Boeing. And I'm fairly certain that I am currently the oldest, longest-serving soldier in any component of our Army. That in itself is a very good reason to move on and clear up space for younger folks. I figure there's gonna be at least 20 people get promoted when I get out of here, so congr congratulations to all of you. In any case, I have had an amazing adventure over the last 44 years of service as an Army officer and 12 years as the Adjutant General. If I describe the entire journey, it might take me 44 years, so I'll just hit a few of the highlights. First, as a student at Seattle University and the president of the highly vaunted ROTC Pathfinder Club, my friends and I summited Mount St. Helens before it blew off its 3,000 top feet. And we helped to rescue another climber who had fallen into a deep crevasse. And that really started my adventure. I flew for the very first time in my life in the back of an Army Chinook helicopter that took us from the Sandpoint Naval Air Station to Fort Lewis. And I was hooked after that. I did the slide for life at North Fort Lewis from a 50-foot tower and dropped from the zip line into a lake before I would have slammed into the ground. I got to parachute out of a C-123 and a C-141 cargo jet, both Vietnam War era aircraft. I learned how to drive an M60 tank and fire the main gun and machine guns, as well as eventually shooting nearly every weapon that the Army has, from pistols to cannons. I achieved a lifelong goal of becoming a pilot, an Army aviator, and remember hollering at the top of my lungs and laughing with pure joy while flying during my very first solo flight, and then going on to fly four more different aircraft over the course of my career. I played a role in developing both night vision goggle tactics and desert fighting tactics as a Cobra attack helicopter pilot and platoon leader at Fort Hood. 
I can still feel the thrill of skimming along the ground of West Texas at 100 knots, inbound to shoot anti-tank missiles and rockets at a target array 5,000 meters away, and watching my four other Cobras come online with me when I made the radio call to assume attack formation. God, I get goosebumps just saying that out loud. It was awesome. The old tanks and trucks out there, well, they got blown up. I remember flying an OH-58 into the crater of Mount St. Helens and watching what looked like chocolate milkshake waterfalls of volcanic ash flow towards Spirit Lake, where I used to fish as a boy. I also remember waving back at people who waved at me from skyscrapers as we flew through the heart of downtown Seattle. And I remember landing with a flight of four OH-58s on the roof of a skyscraper in Portland, which just happened to have a restaurant known for great pizza. So <laughs> I, that worked out. That was back in the days when we could have a little bit of fun. I remember flying a Black Hawk that had just returned from the first of the 168s deployment to Kuwait. I flew that from Savannah, Georgia to Fort Hood, and that turned into a never-ending emergency procedure the entire way because of all the sand in every part of the aircraft. So it was great training for me. As a soldier in the Washington Army National Guard, I traveled to Hokkaido, Japan for an exercise with the Japanese Self-Defense Force and got to experience an ice festival in addition to destroying the enemy in a simulation and drinking quite a bit of sake with my new friends. I traveled to South Korea for an exercise and watched a halo parachute jump with the South Korean Special Forces from the back of a C-130 while sending photos of the event live to Korean War veterans who had served there with my uncle. I went to Thailand at least 10 times in support of our partnership with the Armed Forces of Thailand. I rode an elephant through the northern jungles of Chiang Mai and into the River Kwai. And I had the honor of establishing that new partnership with Malaysia in Kuala Lumpur. I was able to spend Thanksgiving with our deployed guardsmen in Kuwait and again in Afghanistan. I've been to almost every state in the nation, as well as the Pentagon, the nation's capital, the White House, and the headquarters for the FBI, the CIA, and DHS. I've met President Obama, Vice President at the time, Joe Biden and Jill Biden, Vice President Pence, Chairman Milley, Secretaries of Defense, Rumsfeld, Gates, Carter, Esper, all of our congressional delegation, and the Chiefs of Staff of the Army, General Shinseki, Ordierno, Milley, McConville, and George. I've been honored to interact with the ambassadors to Thailand and Malaysia, as well as ambassadors from Thailand and Malaysia, and consul generals from numerous nations. And I would like us all to recognize our consul general who is here with us today from Ukraine. Sir, we are with you 100%. Thank you for being here. I've flown with our 141st Aerial Refueling Wing as they refueled fighters, B-1 bombers, and a giant C-17. I've been fortunate enough to look down on the summit of Mount Rainier from the cockpit of a KC-135 just before we had an electrical fire and had to make an emergency landing back at Fairchild with a full load of fuel on board. Did, did I mention how old those airplanes are? You know, we, we've, I know General Welsh is going to fix that. <laughs> I've had the opportunity to get to know some great people in our Coast Guard and our Navy. I've been aboard the nuclear submarine, the Henry M. Jackson, twice, and come to learn that that is where you can find the smartest members of our military. They are all nuclear scientists, even the youngest members of the crew. I came around the corner, and there was a, like, a guy that looked like he's 12 years old on the control of the, mis the, the missile launch button. And I thought, holy smokes, that guy looks young. But he was amazingly professional. I got to hover a submarine in their simulator, which for a helicopter pilot I thought was pretty cool. I've been aboard the aircraft carrier, the USS Enterprise, and been in awe of how enormous that ship is and how well it functions. But my favorite adventure with the Navy took place aboard one of our destroyers, the USS Russell, in the middle of the Persian Gulf. I was visiting the aviators of our 1st of the 168 Raptor Battalion on one of their deployments, and they were flying some support missions out to the Navy, so I went along with them. We landed on the, the deck of uh, the Russell with one of our Blackhawks out in the Gulf, 
I went inside to the captain's mess where we had some amazingly good coffee and freshly baked chocolate chip cookies all served on fine china. You know, it was like we went through some kind of wormhole and landed in a different universe out there. And as, as we left the mess and receiving a briefing in their command center about the two Chinese destroyers that were shadowing us, suddenly a siren went off and sailors started to hustle. The PA system announced that we were going to general quarters. I'd seen enough movies to know what that meant. Out on the deck, missile launchers and helmets and machine guns appeared. I watched as my helicopter left the ship without me. That was great. A large gun swung toward the starboard side of the ship. The captain told me that two Iranian fast boats were about 1,000 yards away and closing fast. The captain said that a few months ago, they would have begun taking evasive turns, push up a wake that would cause the small boats to slow down. I said, well, that was then. What do you do now? The captain smiled and said, if they get closer than 200 yards, I'm sinking them. I said, well, I found it a little ironic that I'd been in the Army for over 30 years, and the closest I'd ever been to an actual combat engagement would be with the Navy. <laughs> kind of crazy. Fortunately, the Iranians knew how close they could get before they were blown out of the water. I looked through the binoculars and could see two of the Iranian boats stopped at exactly 200 yards, while the Iranians took peach pictures of each other with the thumbs up with us in the background. So... Evidently, posting cool pictures on the internet is an international phenomena as well. In 2006, I found myself on a C-17 that was about to land at Bagram Airfield in Afghanistan. The very young airman in charge of the cavernous back of that plane stood at the podium and said, ladies and gentlemen, you may want to tighten your seat belts as we're about to make a steep approach into Bagram. Well, the words had just barely left her lips, and the pilot cranked that plane over and nosed over steeply and began this crazy corkscrewing approach to make it difficult to get hit by any pot shots by people who wished us, uh, you know, harm down there. But what a ride. I didn't know a C-17 could move like that. My time in Afghanistan was brief, but I got to spend time with our 341st Military Intelligence Battalion as they interrogated Al-Qaeda and Taliban prisoners. The prisoners were very focused while in their confined area and either read the Koran or did push-ups. Occasionally, one would look in my direction and make eye contact with me. I'll never forget the intensity of the hatred that stared back at me at that moment. It left no room for anything else, and it absolutely chilled me to the core. It was such a sad statement of the human condition. We've had amazing adventures here in Washington as well. The numerous floods of the early 90s, Firestorm 94, where I flew an OH-58 over my own blackened property, Macaw tribal whaling, which raised the ire of echo terrorist groups, the Nisqually earthquake, the attacks of 9-11 that changed all of our lives and led to two more years of active duty for me, numerous ice storms and snowstorms, as we've heard, the deadliest landslide, train derailments, the worst fires in history, and of course, the global pandemic. We've also seen a stolen Horizon airliner. That was one of the craziest things. Chased across our skies by F-15s. A World War II anti-ship mine that just popped up off Bainbridge Island. The George Floyd riots in the chop zone of Seattle. The insurrection in, the, in Olympia and the, in DC as well in 2021. And who can forget the Chinese spy balloons that required us to scramble fighters? A homegrown terrorist uh, in Montesano who was threatening to, to blow up our armory. And a host of other emergencies that required us to respond and kept my life extremely interesting. I've also had some unique adventures that most people simply don't have the opportunity to experience. I've been honored by the Seahawks and invited to watch a football game from their owner's box. I've been to a Kraken game and enjoyed their hospitality in their owner's box and received a standing roaring ovation from the fans. I recently was recognized by the Mariners as the military person of the year and got to throw out an opening pitch. And I watched the game from that owner's box as well and that was pretty cool. Now, I know it sounds like I'm kind of bragging on this, but I'm truly not. This has been a humbling experience. And my intent here is to express how in awe I am of what I have been blessed to experience. 
I still find it hard to believe that a regular guy from Federal Way, like me, has been given all of these amazing experiences over the last 44 years. As I leave, I am departing with an attitude of gratitude. It has been humbling. While I thanked a lot of people during my farewell dinner, there are a few more that I save for this speech today. First, I am thankful to God for unfolding the path of life as I walked it. I've learned that it's always good to have a plan, but there is a higher plan that sometimes will be better if you simply trust and keep moving forward. I'm thankful that I figured out that the purpose of life is to have a purpose. I'm thankful for my family. My wife of 42 years, Dolores, has carried the load when I was working and always placed our family and our country above her own comfort and desires. My mom and dad, who couldn't be with us today, but are going to be watching this on television at some point, I think, I owe a lot to them. They instilled the values of service to our country, individual responsibility, and hard work. I'm thankful to my kids for becoming people of character, for understanding when duty called me away when they were young, and for their own service as Army officers in Iraq. I'm grateful for my grandchildren who work hard in school and will contribute to our country and our world in ways yet to be realized, and to my brother and sister, nieces and nephews, and my godsons for always being supportive. I'm thankful to my friends who have become extended family and kept me sane through fishing, hunting, travel, and sharing their families with me. I'm grateful to Seattle University for educating me, introducing me to my wife and friends, and later educating my kids. I am eternally grateful to the United States Army for funding my education, two careers, and forging me into the person that I have become. I can't imagine what my life would be like if I hadn't received that Army ROTC scholarship at Seattle U all those years ago. Thanks to the Washington National Guard and Military Department for giving me the venue to continue my military service while enjoying the opportunity to have a second career in education. As I mentioned in this previous ceremony, I'm thankful to Governor Gregoire for taking a chance and appointing somebody who is not an attorney uh, as TAG, and to Governor Inslee for being an amazing leader and leading our state through the worst disasters of the time, the global pandemic. I'm thankful to have served with the best soldiers, airmen, civilians in the nation, people who know that the real purpose of life is to serve something bigger than just themselves. In my opinion, protecting and preserving our national beliefs in equality, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, freedom, the rule of law, and self-determination is the best life of purpose that anyone can lead. I'm thankful for our service members who have always sacrificed themselves so that our country continues to evolve and we succeed at the many difficult missions given to us as we protect our country and our state. I am so very proud of you. Finally, I'm thankful to have known and served with many of our fallen and their families. I carry them all in my heart and I am eternally grateful for their sacrifice and like you, I will never ever forget them. Now as I retire, I'm confident that the new TAG and this organization is going to be successful. This organization is successful because we work together as a united team across the different categories of Army, Air Force, State, Federal, AGR, technicians, traditional guardsmen, civilians, officers, NCOs, and enlisted members. It only works when all those different categories work together and you do that. Where there is unity, there is always victory. When the entire team is committed to working together, you are invincible. And whoever happens to be at the top is less important than in other organizations where the members oppose each other and the leader has to rule with a heavy hand. I'm also confident in the leadership abilities of General Welsh and know that he will take this team to the next level of professionalism and mission accomplishment while demonstrating compassion for the members of the team. This team is in good hands, and I see a very bright future for you. You have been able to simultaneously do all of the things that we have talked about here today over the course of these two ceremonies. You are already tested and proven as an amazing team. 
you can and will respond effectively to whatever war or disaster that befalls us. I believe that, and I am extremely confident in you. It has been an indescribable honor to serve with you and the thousands of other dedicated soldiers, airmen, civilians over the past 44 years. You are truly the best of America and Washington. I look forward to following your adventures in the future and wish you all the very best. Thank you for your continued excellence. May God continue to bless you, our state, and the United States of America. It's been an honor. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the playing of the Air Force song, followed by the Army song. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. On behalf of Major General Retired Dougherty, I would like to thank you for your, for your participation in today's ceremony. Please join us for refreshments in buildings 91 and 92, located immediately to the re re rear of the reviewing stand. All right, here we go. Good job, man. Good job. Good job. We did it. Good planning.